with another video. You can hear it in my voice. I'm kind of frustrated, but um, what we're going to do is. And you guys are probably wondering why, why does he make so many videos per day? I just have that kind of time right now. So. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. This video is about. Liquidity boy levels. And like I said, we have market reviews, we have concept videos every single day. Okay. So the first thing I want you to understand about liquidity boy level. Remember how we talking, how we were talking rather, about how PD arrays in the marketplace do not work just anywhere. My bad, I had to hit the blunt. I'm trying to be less frustrated. Um, when you're looking at a dealing range, there we go. When you're looking at a dealing range, right, regardless of premium or discount, you'll notice that one of my biggest gold back levels. And what I mean is, like, clearly in size, it's a lot bigger than my rejection block or my fair value gap or um, another structure in my dealing range. This is, like, the biggest level next to my breaker level, okay? The liquidity boy level. This is my favorite PD array. And the reason why, again, I'm going to call it a PD Ray, I don't care if you disagree or whatever. If it's on this dealing range, to me, it's a PD Ray, I don't care. So, me personally, right? This is my favorite of them all. Order block, rejection block, fair value. This is what I focus on, okay? And me personally, right? The more you guys get to understand more about my, you know, me as a person or, you know, as a mentor, as a trader, as a human, um, I'm an, I'm a recovering workaholic, which is why you see so much content from me per day. I've lost sleep over the stuff that I've taught you so far. And every single day for years, this used to escape me in the marketplace. I've always tried to figure out like, okay, well, there are long as shit candles in the marketplace damn near every day. But even outside of like the talk about kill zone or, you know, just time and price by itself. But I want to know when the trending starts. When does the fucking trending start? This is the thing about your LV level that you have to understand. We talked about how yeah, I'm here, okay? Dude, my anxiety is trying to uh, fuck me over right now, but I'm trying to focus on the lecture so it's not as bad. So, realistically, when you see how, like, this liquidity void pops in, and obviously it's a, a discount premium, Liquidity boy. We have both on either side. People get confused because they ask me all the time, yo, am I expecting this to work right now since we're in a coming from the high, we pop up to a what? Order block up here. And then we drop. Like we talked about. Now, Emphasis on the liquidity void level, okay? If you notice that every single time we actually pass through it, bullish or bearish, it's going to give a similar vibe. The moment we get here, right? Crazy rundown. You have really energetic candles. 
really, really far and really, really fast. Now watch. This run here. Where does it start? Liquidity void level. What is that? Liquidity void. Do you feel what I'm saying? It only starts and stops at specific levels. And obviously you need to understand where your dealing ranges are at. You're not going to come in and say, you know what? I'm expecting a random ass insane move. Not saying the breaker can't do a insane move. But you have to come in and understand that the liquidity void is responsible for these long insane price swings. Everybody tries to lose sleep over to find. Including myself. And again, I'm very transparent, so again, the more that I'm talking, the more I'm smoking, my anxiety is coming down. And so, when we're talking about liquidity void levels, we're talking about the expected price action and the function. We understand it's found in a certain spot. Premium and discount separates you from buying or selling. Right now, like I said, you see me a lot of times on the hour time frame. It's very balanced. I can see liquidity. I can see these levels. And again, I've been messing with the 729 this entire time. Because we talked about wireframes. Right? So, watch this. You go to ES, it's the same thing. Now watch, right? Similar structure, but it looks way different here. Is this helpful? Fuck no. So, we need to go down to another dealing range. Okay? And the more that we talk, you're going to understand. Yo. Wow. I can actually come in and use different dealing ranges for different assets, depending on how they work. So... Do you see where it says additional range here? You can come in and apply another range on top. Now, isn't this 10 times more helpful than how we just had it? And why do I say that? The 81, right? There's two of these stacked on top of each other. The high was met here. We go down. We complete a second one. Now watch. I don't have to like come up and downshift it at all. Some assets you're going to have more fun doing that with. Sometimes if I know that we're right outside of it or it looks kind of weird on one partition, I'll switch this around until I do what's called a, uh, I'm basically form fitting like where price already came from so I can be accurate where it's going. And again, all I did was go to an 81. This is the current range right now. And there's one above me. So, to not confuse you, right, watch. 81, if I just happen to upshift it, looks like that. So, that goes to show you. I get the question all the time. Which PO3 should I be focused on? Which one should I keep it on? Which one should I trade from? It's not a singular answer. You're primarily going to take trades from your 81, 243, especially being on, you know, ES, NQ, YM, 243, 81, 27. 27s are really good for stop runs and down, right? 27 and down. Great for liquidity purposes. 
If you understand what your wireframe is up to, okay, so the 81 high is going downward. You could pop to a 27 and start taking entries in here. Why not? Right? But emphasis is, again, look at the price swing, right? Master price swing. What are we talking about specifically? The liquidity void. Why is it lethargic in here? Slow, small candles. When we pass through our liquidity void level, this is your biggest candle. And what does it do? Liquidity void is not just a big candle, but a large, insane run or where it starts from. You feel what I'm saying? And again, your first 81 gets demolished. It doesn't have to play support resistance in the same one when it's distributing. Doesn't have to. Now, as somebody like me, right? Functioning workaholic. What I did for the last damn near 10 years was study algorithmic price action. And even at the time where I didn't know about ICT 10 years ago, I knew there had to be something in the marketplace to explain all of this up, down, left, right, where liquidity should be formed. When I got to studying ICT all the way, and this made more sense to me, liquidity void, right? Understand the function. Understand what it looks like. Like I said, watch when I downshift it again. Watch this. All right. I want you to look at this partition's liquidity void. Watch. This is the low. But look, liquidity void level. Where does the large, insane price swing from here start? Right there. Come on now. you telling me you can't take another trade in there? It even stops for a second. And these are all our candles, so you have plenty of time to decide, yo, is this going to be a run down so it could go up to the, uh, you know, a stop run in this dealing range for it to go higher and then support from here as a, a, a low and start going up again? Or is it going to come in this dealing range, spike up, stop here because it's a high and you're in this dealing range now. This one is over with. As fast as it was, as clean as it was, it's done now. When you take support or when you take resistance here, it fails to break this high. There's a small fair value gap in here. Obviously, we're on an hour. You can probably come down and watch a fair value gap here. We're going to find it in a moment. But the emphasis on the liquidity void. Large, insane candles, and look how it runs. And it's not going to stop because you understand the terminus. Right to the low. Look at how perfectly it stops. Remind you. We're still talking about the basics. This is all basic stuff. That's why I could come on YouTube and talk about all this. And my students still have so much stuff in my private section to my Discord. Years and years and years of stuff you can study. These are just the basics. Believe me. When we get into other like fun concepts like, you know, go back time or like the algos. There's a certain way that price actually runs through these dealing ranges. It's not random. It's not just high EQ, low or vice versa. It takes a specific uh, path. And the same thing when we're looking at price action, right? 
Let's drop down to a 15 and look at the same uh, fair value area. Now watch. Let's see what we can do. I feel so much better now. I mean, I love weed, but I just feel relaxed now. Um, my cash app got hacked, long story short. And, you know, we took a little L, but um, we can't really be too, too worried about that. Material things always come back, right? Money always comes back, right? So, watch. What a 15. My bad. If you ever hear me like uh, take a little break like that, I'm clearly smoking, so be patient. Now we're watching for where we can find our fair value gap. Oh, yeah, I can tell. I mean, obviously, if you come up to like a lower time frame. Some people might say, well, what about this inverse here? This one's not terrible. I mean, you could look at price this way if you like, but I guarantee you we can get a little better than that. So do you see how like, you know, there's a little space on this fair value gap here. This one's obviously a balanced price range. So when we come down, there's a bearish fair value gap and it breaks to the upside. It goes back to the high. This one right here, you have a uh, little imbalance here, but outside of you know order blocking the high level and rejection level, I'm focused only here because again, however you're comfortable with narrative, you like regular fair value gaps or you like inverse fair value gaps, they're both formed in the same spot. So when you see how, again, balance price range, we disrespect this first fair value gap. Goes up. Tags the high, comes down. But not only when it comes down, it does this here, specifically. Drops down. It breaks this fair value gap. It's a bullish one, right? Obviously. Blue. It pops back one more time. Rejection block. And it's coupled with running liquidity from the rejection block here. Comes down. And why does it come up and tag right here before it drops? Think about it. Inverse. Like I said, there's a lower time frame one because we're on the five minute. There's still a lower time frame one I guarantee you we can find. But still, this is good enough logic if you're comfortable that way to take a trade. No problem. Okay. Inverse for a value gap. And we come back and we tag it. You know, breaker style. I like stuff like that. So anyway, let's find this little, uh, now I love, me personally, I only answer trades on like the one minute, two minute, and I mean, even slightly rarely the three minute, but I love the three minute for a lot of reasons. I love the three minute for a lot of reasons. Now, let's check out this area. What are we looking at? Oof. What did I tell you? You could choose to use the inverse if you want to. But you are to do that. Because look, you come down to this time frame and we're on a three minute. Like I said, three minute is absolutely perfect. Three minute is absolutely perfect. Damn, that's sick. Perfect fair value gap and fair value gap. They're both bearish because obviously we're in a premium. Rejected a high. You can use the inverse if you want. Come down to a lower time frame and really find that fair value gap because it's there. And these are the ones you want to use. They both work. These are the ones that work.
You can get down here. Yeah, there's another fair value gap, no problem. But I guarantee you when we drop down to another dealing range, yes, this is probably a fair value gap area. It's fractal. But you're not going to randomly start searching for uh, uh, fair value gaps outside of these levels. And on top of that, you're not going to focus on bullish ones because you're bearish. You're not going to get scared when a, a, a bullish fair value gap comes out of nowhere and you think it's going to hold. This is what I mean. People who have trouble holding because they see uh, random fair value gaps in the market. Oh, bro, I mean, I got out because of the imbalance. Oh. How do you know which one to hold? There's a bearish one, bullish one. And I already gave you the slight cheat code anyway. When price is bearish, it's going to respect bearish PD arrays. It's not bullish. You feel me? It's going to fuck this up. Another imbalance here. Boom. Downside. You feel me? It's going to disrespect this shit. You feel what I'm saying? Break down. If you tried to take this for a value gap, I feel sorry for you. You tried to take that one, I feel sorry for you. Don't take these. Leave that shit alone. Find bearish fair value gap right in the levels that it needs to be in. Now watch. When we drill it down like this. Watch. Keep what I'm saying, bro. Keep what I'm saying. Do you see how we pop down on this one? We talked about this fair value gap. Like I said, this candle is coming from a fair value gap zone. I think that works, no problem. You know what I'm saying? You can clearly see uh, I'm stoned, so I start using the uh, the actual mouse. Forget it's a touch screen. But like I said, look how nicely this fair value gap works. Right? And even when you get back there, you get another play at it for another scalp if you want to. And that's the thing. We talk about the equilibrium level. We're going to do another separate video by itself on the equilibrium level. But just so you can see it, right? Like I said, EQ is a hot spot for consolidation. Hot spot. Plays around EQ. That's it. You don't have to, you know, go crazy on the narrative. But you see, it plays a, a crucial role on how it influences price, for sure. And look at every time it reacts. Look at the wicks in there. It can act as a support or resistant, depending on if you understand the marketplace, any environment. Supports off here, bearish. Supports off there, bullish. But watch, this whole video is not about that. The video is about what? And I'm on a 27 now. What are we talking about? Oh, I feel so much better. Liquidity boy. I spent over 10 hours a day for years try and master this stuff, yo. 10 hours a day for years. Years. Do not get discouraged in your trading. You're just now learning about gold back levels. You're just now understanding that price is not random and that these things do run on a strict algorithm. And the more do we talk about um, how the market really works, I'll give you information on how central banks move money. When you take order blocks, when you see that first uh, dip below a candle in an order block level, and it comes to rebalance that, that's what we call a parent order. Parent orders are where smart money is basically signaling, okay, cool, this is the spot that we'd like to set up an order block. 
whatever, whatever, right? Bullish, bearish, order block, does it all the time, right? And if you're used to trading ICT concepts, you're used to just trading the concept because you learned it. Again, smart money does influence price this way, right? So to finish up this part of the lecture, look at this liquidity board through the level. Remember, my fair value gap is always blue. Down. And down again. So, so, so you understand the narrative. But realistically, like I said, when you take order blocks, that first order block candle is what we call a parent order. When you go to rebalance an order block, it's what we call a child order. Look. See that bullish order block? This candle here gets violated upward. We go up and right in our uh, fair value and order block level, we rebalance this order block and slightly tag this low for rejection block. But right at this order block, right? This is what we call a parent order. So when this gets set up in the marketplace just like this, they can't put their entire size into their trade in one spot. So in order to efficiently and do it with a, you know, kind of in a, a, a powerful way and be on time, they're going to use a parent order and these are called child order. So every single time that it dips down, one, two, this candle opens, dips down one more time, three. It does it two or three times because the algorithm is coded to do that. This is like the third or I think second or third generation of the algorithm when they updated it, they added child orders. It was actually too easy for people to see when an order block was forming and it only had one rebalance at one point before making this original move. But later down the line, they coded it so that they have parent and child orders. So smart money can get their entire order in before the, the, the move now. Does that make sense? I'm telling you, we have a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about. Child orders. This is how you understand more about not just the marketplace from our perspective, but from a market maker perspective. Okay. Understand, we talked about liquidity voids, where they're formed, what they look like, and the function. And look, liquidity void, right up. And this one's in a discount, so it went bullish. You understand the organization of the marketplace is that clean. And again, we're just on the 27, and you can dominate ES with the 27. Look at this. Before we close this out. Liquidity void. Fair value level. Liquidity is here. We already tagged the low. What are you going to do from the low? Start buying. When you get in this area, you have an EQ. You're not surprised that it has a reaction here. It comes all the way back into your fair value gap, which is a part of your fair value level because it came from that. So you can mark that fair value gap and you can think about the liquidity void. Like I said, when you understand how to use liquidity voids, you go to Louis Vuitton, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Go to Louis Vuitton. And I'm going to show you something. This is what we call a 100% symmetrical price link. Why? It goes from LV to LV. here and it reverses right it goes from one discount level to the same premium level you'll see that a lot of times too and obviously the partition completes but what i'm telling you is that you'll see what we call a 100 percent symmetrical price wing Whatever, man. 
We'll talk more about it. Guess I'll roll another blunt. I'll see you guys in the next video.